See, the problem is, is that most people don't even believe the Bible. Coming over here and looking at a couple of polls. Let's look at this poll. Uh, what is it? LifewayResearch.com says Americans are fond of the Bible, but don't actually read it. So you come down here and you look at their poll right here. All right, here's the poll or survey that they did. It says, how much of the Bible have people read? Okay, so you look in here. Of course, there's a, there's a poll. I don't know much about how they did the poll, if it's a true random sample or whatever. But I've looked at these polls in the past, and this one pretty much lines up. Now, you look here, out of, out of all of America right here, 10% of America has never read the Bible. 13% has only read a few sentences, you know, that's that's probably, you know, sitting in a church and, you know, somebody say go to a certain book and they read that. And that's pretty much all they've done. 30% have read several passages or stories in the Bible, like they might have read the story of Noah's Ark or they might have read about uh, Joseph in Egypt or something like that. Only that's 30%. Now, in this 30%, there's a lot of people that I consider Psalms 23 Christians. Because that's the only book they've ever read. That's the only book they read. That's the only chapter of the Bible they read is Psalms 23. When they're up, they read Psalms 23. When they're down, they read Psalms 23. When they, you know, somebody tell them to read something in church, that's what they go to, Psalms 23. 15% has read at least half of it. And the half they're probably talking about is probably the New Testament or the Old Testament. They haven't read, you know, the other half. 12% say that they've read almost all of the Bible. 12% out of all, all of America, only 12% has actually read almost all of it. But look at this. 11% has, has read the Bible. Only 11% of, of Americans have let, read the Bible, with 9% saying that they've read it at, uh, more than once. Um, I would consider myself in, in this part that actually read it more than once. But, you know, that's nine percent of America. Now, I, I would I would I would I would argue that you have to read it more than once in order to get a good understanding of it. You have to read it more than once. Only nine percent, but only 11 percent have actually read the Bible. Only 11 percent of Americans have actually read the Bible. So that's 89 percent of the population have no idea what's in the scripture. No idea what's in the scripture. 89% of America does not know what's in the scripture at all. And then you say, well, out of, out of the 11%, how many of them actually read it? Let's jump over here to another poll. Now, this is uh, the Gallup poll. It says news.gallup.com. It says record few Americans believe Bible is literal word of God. 24%. So now... I'm, I'm doing this video as a response to somebody in my Facebook account. Um, you guys, if you could, I think you can get, you know, um, see some of the stuff on my Facebook account. If you go to Facebook forward slash in the fight, you can actually see where my Facebook account is. Um, but 24%. So now I have a thousand friends in my Facebook account. And, um, of course, you know, a lot of these people, you know, aren't really friends, but a lot of them, you know, are family members. They are, there are, you know, people I went to high school with, or was in the army with, or worked in the nuclear power industry with, you know, these are people that I actually know. So it's a random, you know, it's, it, those people are random, you know, it's not like, you know, a whole bunch of people from, you know, YouTube as, you know, that watch the, it's not like a whole lot of people that, you know, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Or in my Facebook account, I don't think anybody, you know, that subscribed to my YouTube account is um, in my f a friend in my Facebook account. Unless, of course, I signed them up myself. But so out of a thousand people, that would mean out of a thousand people in the Facebook account, only about 110 of them have actually read the Bible. And then out of the 110, I'm going to I would argue and say that only 24 percent of that 110 actually believe it. So out of a thousand people, a thousand friends in my Facebook account, 20 to 25, maybe 30 people actually believe what it says, know what it says and believe what it says. And I, and I know some people are going to argue. They say, well, if they if people have actually read it, they probably believe it. I disagree. I know a lot of people who claim to have read the entire Bible and don't believe what it says. You know, I don't want to call any any anybody's name. You know, I don't want to embarrass anybody. But, you know, even pastors, even pastors have, 
will sit up and say, yeah, I've, I've read the Bible, but yet they will argue that you're not supposed to keep the Mosaic laws, that you're not supposed to, you know, follow what's in there. They, they see it more as just, you know, a book of good ideas or a book of good things to do. And you don't have to you, they don't see it as the literal word of God. That's that's a lot of people. But yet we're listening to these people. Yet these are the people who yell the loudest talking about the Bible was not real or, you know, you, you can't go by what it says. And so then when we come down and somebody says, um, you know, the Bible talks about this tribulation period and you got the majority of people saying, no, I don't believe it. Now, out of the 11 percent that say they've actually read the Bible, how many of them have actually read the lost books out of the Bible or the apocryphal books? You know, there is an apocryphal Old Testament and there's an apocryphal New Testament, which, you know, has a lot of it's a volume of books. It has multiple books in it. But there's also a uh, pseudepigrapha. There's there's um, there's Enoch there. I'm looking on the shelf here. There's um, uh, what else is there up here? Um I guess you, you could keep uh, Josephus, but, you know, people don't consider that scriptural uh, stuff. But, you know, there's a there's a lot of other um, books, extra canonical books that has a wealth of information in it that, you know, people don't people don't read or don't know about or don't believe in. But these books, if you know anything about the history of the Catholic Church and how the Catholics are the ones who who canonized the Bible, who I'm um, meaning they are the ones who chose which of the books will be included in those 66 books that we call the Bible. You know that they left out a lot of important books. They left out Enoch. They left out the Shepherd of Hermas. They left out a lot of important books that hold a lot of good information, especially to do with the end times. I would argue that they did because it identifies them or it implicates them in a lot of this mess that's going on and they didn't want us to know it. So they didn't they they left those books out of the Canaan, you know, and in these books, we find a wealth of information about the stuff that's coming in, on in this world, like all of the wars that are prophesied in, in the Bible. The Third World War is talked about in the Bible, you know, and but we see the the lead up to the Third World War. And, you know, people don't recognize it. They don't see all of they don't know who Gog and Magog is and how they're supposed to overthrow the, the, the new uh, the, the, the new Egypt or whatever. They don't recognize that stuff. And, and it's because they they're not aware of what's going on in the Bible. And so they. They, they laugh or they mock when they hear this kind of stuff. The Bible talks about famines, talks about plagues. It talks about earth impacts. These people don't know what all of this stuff. And so that and so they're not ready for it. And then the Bible also talks about earthquakes, you know, and volcanoes and fires and floods. Now, you see a lot of this stuff going on in, in, in the news or whatever. But how many of these people are putting together that these are prophecies being fulfilled, you know, and then speaking of the news. We, we turn on CNN, we turn on Fox to get our news. But how many how many of us are aware of what it takes to be one of these so-called TV personalities? You know, I, I, I say it, you know, slowly, but a lot of these people have I'm going to say it. They sold they sold to the devil just so they can have the fame and the fortune of being a TV personality. But yet we're relying on them to tell us what's going on. Are you serious? Now, like I said, I'm making this video you know, in response to something that was said on my Facebook account. Now, I started off my ministry on Facebook all the way back in 2014. I started trying to make people aware of what was going on or what was coming in the world based on what the scripture was saying. But I wasn't getting a great response. You know, this is the everyday crowd talking about, you know, friends and family. But look. The statistics say that they don't believe it out of a thousand people in my Facebook account, according to the numbers that we just looked at, only about 25 of them actually believe what the scripture says. Now I post videos over on YouTube. I have an anonymous YouTube channel called Coach in the Fight. Go over there and subscribe to our channel. We do a lot of Bible studies. In fact, we do mostly Bible studies. And here lately, we've been focusing on a lot of the end time prophecies that come straight out of the scripture. So if you're curious to what the Bible actually says, jump over there, coach in the fight, subscribe to our channel. Peace be unto you. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence and faith. We teach faith.
virtue.